Hello everyone and welcome back to Technically Unsure, the channel where I'm about 90% sure 90%. what I'm doing uh, technically, uh, maybe 95%. 95%. I don't know what's, who's counting. Today, I am definitely sure about one thing. There is an SBC that's already got me geeked out. We are going to check it out together. So we are going to explore a single board computer, SBC, uh, from a brand new up and coming baby startup known as Orange Pi. Okay, I'm kidding. <laughs> so these folks have been actually around since like 2005 and churning out SBCs longer than some of you had your driver's license. So uh, we have reviewed several their, uh, of their SBCs and their products uh, on this channel. Today's offering is a little bit different. Most SBCs we played around on this channel where either like Raspberry Pi related, Raspberry Pi, I don't know, CM4, CM5 or Raspberry Pi 5 or whatever. Or it was Rockchip, different versions of Rockchip or compute modules from Rockchip, a lot of Raxa stuff and other, other companies' products and occasional ESP32. Uh, I think I did like one. Today's star, it runs on all winner T527, 8 core ARM Cortex A55 based SOC. That's a lot of work to say. It's pretty robust chip. It also comes with a Hi-Fi 4 DSP. DSP is the digital signal processor optimized for audio, voice, and neural network processing. But all that being said, there is more. And uh, this thing also comes with a RISC-V multi-core industrial grade co-processor. You know that I love RISC-V, okay? So seriously, if Risk Fiverr like pizza topping, I'd be the person ordering extra. So anyway, on top of all that, it has two tops NPU, neural network processing unit. It comes with your choice of two gigabyte or four gigabyte LPDDR4 slash 4X RAM. And you might say, what? LPDDR4 slash 4X? What did you say? What did you just say? It's basically a fancy way of saying low power RAM, DDR4 RAM that is created by Samsung, I believe, and uh, it's more efficient than, uh, you know, your grandfather's uh, RAM from the 80s. The most impressive and critical thing about this SPC is the four gigabyte RAM version of it is just $40. Let's do a reality check here. It's a eight A55 bay core based SPC, okay? Don't expect it to beat Raspberry Pi 5 or Raxa Rock 5B and blow them out of water. Nah, not gonna happen. This board is more for those of us who want to tinker, you know, load some Linux, poke at some GPIO pins, maybe write some code, see if it compiles, you know, and uh, just do nerdy things and have some nerdy good times, okay? So it's 40 bucks, and I think that's a very sweet deal. On top of everything that I just said, another thing that impressed me was that these guys, released Ubuntu Jammy desktop. It comes with XFCE and GNOME versions. Uh, Ubuntu Jammy server, uh, Debian Bookworm server, Debian Bookworm desktop, which is GNOME version only, and Android 13. You can run everything except your dishwasher on this board. They have bundled also a full complete toolkit package. They, it's hosted on Google Drive, so I just downloaded the whole the drive, a whole folder. And inside that tool, complete toolkit package, toolkit kit, whatever, it comes with SD card burning tool, Android image burning tool, EMMC tool, cross compile tools, manuals, GPIO documentation, everything, okay? So, I just downloaded the whole thing just in case if I need it. So Orange Pi, you have my attention, but let's not jump into a fanboy frenzy just yet. So we need to actually test this thing, okay? So make sure that it runs as promised, what's on the paper, if it matches the reality, and confirm it's not gonna sit somewhere on my shelf that is never, yeah, never gonna be used, like the hackboard. Yeah, I keep coming back to it. <laughs> That board really started this channel, but yeah, it's just the one of those boards, you know, you pay a lot of money and then nothing works on it. But anyway, let me show you guys what I'm talking about. So this is the Orange Pi 4. This should be EMMC of this. And this is my banged up, uh, you know, I call it pen, I guess. Yeah, I like that. Okay, that is nice. Okay, this 
is the fancy 40 box SPC. So it doesn't come with any heat sink or anything. So that's fine. I have a lot of those heat sinks generic. I'm just going to put one on there. And I love the color coded. Raxa does that too. I love it. it. Helps a lot, especially the ground pins. Love it. Just love it. Let's go through this. So right over here, four USB 2s. Okay. And this one is a gigabit Ethernet. And the gigabit Ethernet chip is right there. And on this side, we have audio uh, jack over here. So CSI, HDMI, and this is 5 volt out, just if you need it. And there is a Type C power port right over here where we can power it. Okay. Uh, this is DSI, this S says LCD. Okay. So, yeah, basically, you can uh, connect the screen to this, and they sell the screen. I didn't buy it, I don't need it now. This one is the Wi Fi and Bluetooth. There is a TTL port right over here, UART, okay, debug uh, UART port right over there. And it just says right there, ground RXDX, so receive and transmit, okay? So you can connect the UART to this and not consume your GPIO for UART, okay? Easy. And uh, yeah, there is uh, other stuff uh, inside like, uh, you know, SPI flash chip, uh, which is this one, I believe. And, uh, you know, and there are some buttons. Yeah, there is a power button right over here. This is power button. And that's the T57 all winner, the main SOC of the sport, this SPC, okay? Oh, by the way, there is the RTC connector and this is generic. I have one of, uh, I have a lot of those RTC connectors, so I might put one in there after getting everything set up. On the flip side, on the back side, we have M.2 M key 2280 uh, PCIe NVMe SSD slot. I bet you weren't expecting that for 40 bucks, right? Tell me the truth, you weren't expecting that. I wasn't even expecting that, so I don't know. It's, it's, it's very nice. And uh, here is where that one will go, which is the uh, eMMC interface. And this one is proprietary. I, as Again, I think it's proprietary. I don't. I think Orange Pi only have this type. Maybe other companies do. Let me know down below. That's what I think. So yeah, this is for their camera. So if you want to connect the MePCSI camera over here with their connectors, you can do that. And uh, yeah, that's also another EDP, another display connectors. Okay, impressive. For well, 40 bucks, I'm gonna say it's a great deal. But 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 again, let's not get ahead. Uh, I don't know if anything even gonna work. So. Uh, we're gonna get there and i just want to quickly take this out okay so this one is a 64 gigabyte emmc as you can see 64 g emmc and i think that's the same same thing in chinese so this is a uh, isocom i don't think i have ever heard of them okay. this is isocom uh 64 g emmc which we can plug it in there and uh, i believe i have uh, an adapter where i can uh, put this on it and turn it into a USB stick, which I can plug into computer and write stuff to it. We're gonna get in uh, all that stuff, okay? So I'm gonna throw this in garbage and I'm gonna keep this, I love it. I'm gonna use this. Let me set this up, pair the SD card with the images. I'm gonna go with Ubuntu first, if Ubuntu works, easy peasy, but I will also showcase the Android, all right? Give me a couple of minutes, I will be right back. All right, so we are back and uh, I have everything. I I placed the SD card and now I am going to plug the power. I put uh, the Ubuntu GNOME version, uh, not the XFCE. I put the GNOME. Oh, there you go. There you go. So initializing bootloader. That's very small, but I will try to pull, fix it a little bit on the post. That's like Windows 11 animation in here, but okay. Let's see how it goes. All right, so we are in and uh, look at that beautiful. Oh, it's snappy. Hopefully I won't jinx anything. So this is like five volts, 0 0.6 amps. So two watts. That is very, very impressive. I hope you guys see that on the other camera. But this is like two watts idle in, uh, in Ubuntu. So that is very nice. So let's log in. Actually, uh, I just have to go to root shell okay all right so let's run the fast fetch first okay so as you can see uh that's the resolution host is that jammy 2020 20, 20 and uh we have ubuntu cpu is sun 55 iw 
3p1. Oh, GPU is detected. Okay. Is it, is the driver installed? Am I in for a surprise? Uh, I guess let's do GL Mark 2 ES2. Oh my God, somebody did it. A vendor did it. They provided an Ubuntu image with a GPU driver installed on it. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? They did it. Okay. All right. So I'm going to shut up. Let's uh, wait for this to finish my, while I already started it. Uh, it's going to take a while. So let's go into fast forward. All right, so we are back and as I hopefully, uh, I hope you guys saw it, but it was like three to four watts and we are getting a GL Mark II score of 642. See, other vendors can learn a lesson here. When you're shipping your Ubuntu image, Debian image, OS image, doesn't matter. Make sure your DL driver, the Mali driver, that is properly installed, okay? that's That being said, I actually uh, want to know how it does in the, uh, you know, uh, stress ng test. Uh, but before that, hold on. If I do, yeah, I was expecting that to be eight. Okay, so stress ng CPU eight. So I am going to let it run, but later I'm going to check the sensor. I don't want to affect the score. So here we have actually first time. I'm seeing, and when you're using every single core in this machine, it uses just one amp. It's five watts. Very impressive, very impressive. In terms of power consumption, extremely efficient. And I, did, I didn't even put a heatsink on it, which I forgot. So I am going to, okay, so for now, okay, all right, okay. So let, let me open up the P sensor. I, I just wanna see the score. Very quickly, uh, okay, so it's not getting temperature data. Okay, it doesn't matter. Uh, I have to maybe try the LM sensor. All right, so it doesn't find any sensors. Okay, that being said, so we got 563. Let me put a heatsink on it, let's try it again. Okay, so I put a heatsink on it, reran the test. It's not It's not really getting hot, a little bit, a little bit on the, on the, on the, now I'm sensing it, okay. So it didn't really change the score much. 571, it was 563. So like seven, eight, nine points, but, 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 let's put this into perspective. The very same test, the metrics prod test from Stress NG, it will get you 870-ish in Raspberry Pi 5. So this is scoring, I'm gonna be gentle and say this is 600. So it is very, very close, very close to Raspberry Pi 5, but it is not there. So it's as expected, so this is, like uh, 570, 600, I don't know. Uh, and the Raspberry Pi is 870, okay? And uh, let me do also a suspension test very quickly. So suspension may not use the, yeah, I don't know. It never goes higher, like a full power, but like it's four watts. So stress NG puts full pressure. Okay, so in this one, we are getting 5,766. It's not that hot. So anyway, yeah, we are getting uh, 5,766. So in this test in Raspberry Pi 5, you will get something like 10,300, 500, okay? So yeah, it's it's slower than Raspberry Pi 5, but it doesn't mean it is slow, as you can see. So uh, another thing I just wanted to test was the speed for uh, the EMMC, okay? So let's do... Okay, so the power consumption goes up a little bit. Wow, okay. So not super impressive, but also not slow, not that slow, okay? It's acceptable range. And uh, we're getting under 65 megabytes per second, okay? Another thing I wanna test is iPerf3. So, yep, that's a true gigabit ethernet, okay? So that is also working fine and without any issue. Now let's try the GPI opens. Uh, give me a couple of minutes. Let me prepare everything. Okay, so as you can see, this is the full documentation. That's like 262 page documentation. 
and they have a command this is beautiful orange pie people very impressed me really for the 40 dollar look at this just run the gpio read all and it shows you every single gpio and their number okay so now i am i just randomly chose the first ground pin uh, that's uh, the number six ground number eight is uh, txd7 doesn't matter but the gpio pin is 45 okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm going to echo 45 to sys class gpio export okay echo uh gpio okay and then i'm going to echo out to sys class gpio and gpio 45 i just exported direction and echo one to sys class gpio gpio 45 value all right look take a look at this it's zero and it's working of course it works these guys rock Look at that there you go okay so gpio test is also done and it's working and i appreciate the documentation like that everything is there also pwm test spi test i square c gpio all that stuff fully documented here you can set the mode here you don't have to do it like dumb as the way i did it with the echo you could have done it with gpio mode Number two, the pin out and then write two, one or zero, okay? You could have you run just with the GPIO command, but I just did it the old fashioned way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to also test the Android, okay? So yeah, just give me a couple of minutes. Let me uh, put an Android on this. And also I wanna confirm that Android works. We tested everything I can, uh, I, I believe. So let me, uh, let me take care of that. Okay, before I go, I just remembered something. I had to connect to Wi-Fi. As you can see, I connected to the unsure Wi-Fi access point and I removed the ethernet, okay? Uh, so I am going to rerun the iperf 3 test. I just wanna see the Wi-Fi speeds. And uh, here's the antenna. Okay, hopefully. All right, so not perfect, not great, but it's also not terrible. So 157, 180. Uh, megabytes all right so it, it's okay it's acceptable but i've seen faster okay it's still if it's acceptable and fine so yeah i tested wi-fi as well i fi gpio cpu benchmark sd emmc benchmark and the ubuntu is working fine everything one more thing i want to test before going uh i just want to test the uh nvme ssd speeds so give me a couple of minutes let me also do that before moving to android Okay, so very quickly, I also want to do the NVMe SSD. As I said, this is the 980 Pro. I just put it in there and uh, I just want to test it. I, I want you all to see live. Power consumption doesn't really change much, but okay. All right, all right. That's a very acceptable speed. 350 megabytes per second, okay? So I hope I covered and I answered every single questions that you had in your mind. Everything is working on this bad boy and they did a great job in operating system and manuals. All right, the last thing, as I said, I want to show you guys that Android also works. So give me a couple of minutes, let me take care of that. I will be right back. Okay, so it's official. I'm very, very impressed with this company. Look at this, Android is also working. And uh, look at this beautiful app that they have, the wiring OP, and then you can go to like GPIO test. And if I open it up, you can see right now it's zero. But if I click on this, you can see it goes to 3.2. If I turn it off, it goes to zero. So you can't even control GPIO from the Android. And also I, uh, they, it comes with this browser. Uh, I think it just the uh, best one is a 1080p where it doesn't drop any frames. As you can see, it can play 1080p with no trouble and the power consumption never goes above five watts. That's like the cap. So I tested everything I can uh, on this bad boy. For $40, that's a steal. And uh, I'm really impressed with this company and this SPC in particular. Okay, so hope you guys all enjoyed it. And please let me know if you have any questions down below. I will try to answer it. Thanks for watching. And uh, I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.